We are live and in person with Mr. Alex Aronson, rock star, realtor, a guy that I've worked with for years. And he's uh, somebody that I've really wanted to interview for a long time because he's crushing it in the market. And uh, he's just got a great story. And uh, he's somebody that's out there just doing everything that needs to be done. So, Alex, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Remley. I'm honored. <laughs> uh, it's an honor to have you here. So let's let's go back in time and let's talk about <clears throat> why. First of all, I think you have a your family history has a little bit of real estate in it, right? I think your dad maybe in the real estate business. You know, he was a commercial. He is was he's kind of like semi now, but he was a commercial loan mortgage broker. The funny okay. thing, I really had no idea what he did. I always thought he's <laughs> like the Jewish mafia. Boiled <laughs> 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 rotten, and uh, you know, didn't really know what he did until I started, you know, interning and doing the office staff job and just kind of uh, relaying to him what I learned about from my job and everything. And lo and behold, he's like, son, I know I bought a house and I'm also in the loan business. I'm like, oh, really? Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to tell a little bit of Alex's backstory, but I'm, I'm, I'm then I'm going to be curious to hear Alex tell it himself because Alex uh, came to our office um, years ago. I don't even know how long it's been now, like eight or 10 years ago now, right? It's a long time ago. Oh yeah. March, 2014, I think yeah, actually. Okay. Yeah. So he came to, to uh, try to get a job as an intern as he was going to college. And we said, no, <laughs> we don't have anything for you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Little did I know he would become an absolute superstar. So I, we said no a few times, but Alex is determined, man. He kept coming back and coming back and kept asking the question. And finally we broke down and we hired him as an intern unpaid for a while. And then he did such a great job uh, that I felt guilty. And so we started paying him. We added him to our staff. And then he got um, decided to become an assistant for one of our, our team players and then became an agent. And now he's like one of the top agents in the entire franchise of our entire 3,000, 6,000 agent franchise. So it's quite a story over an eight, 10 year period that you've had. I like um, it. Yeah. Tell us what was the motivation? I mean, you were absolutely determined to get into the real estate business. I mean, what was that? Because You know, kind of, uh, the love for the business kind of grew on to me, but originally I'll just tell it from the beginning, you know, there's two people I, or two things I have to thank. Of course you, Jim. I mean, if you never gave me an opportunity as an unpaid intern, I would have given up on this business. Probably would have worked for my dad or moved to Houston or something like that. So your reluctance with me is what saved me realistically. Good. <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> the inspiration to all this as as ridiculous as this might sound is so two months before graduating I was a history major with a minor in business not knowing exactly what I wanted to do and uh, my dad calls me one day and he's like son what are you what are you going to do with your life and I'm like I'm, I'm not sure father I, I really don't know and he's like well do you want to be a history teacher I'm like no not not really he's like what about a museum curator do you want to be that son and I'm like no not not really that either he's like son you can be really screwed after college if you don't find an internship somewhere. So <laughs> lo and behold, <laughs> I was taking one class. It was my uh, capstone, which is the culmination of my major. And so I had a really easy schedule and I was living on Weimar Street, which is kind of on the other side of town compared to the university. In between that is the John L. Scott Ashland office. Of course, coincidentally, across from my favorite sports bar, Red Zone. What's there too? <laughs> so I was like, this is perfectly convenient. I can watch my sports on my lunch break, go to school. It would be perfect. So not even really knowing what I was going to step into, I decided to beg for an unpaid internship at your company, which, you know, I didn't know who you were or kind of even what the company entailed. I just thought it was a nice, fancy office. It would really humor my dad and get him off my back. So, uh, <laughs> that is so funny. Yeah, it, it, and it unfolded in a way that is just such a great story in the way that I was just persistent, kind of bugging you for an opportunity that really wasn't even presented to yeah. anyone. And I even remember, I think I missed the first interview spot with you too. Yeah, yeah, what you I did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so crazy. So yeah. so you get into the business. So you, you go through the yeah. internship, you're learning from, you know, we run a, a pretty good size organization. You're learning kind of the back end of the business. Yes. And then he decided, hey, I'm going to I'm going to try my hand at sales. What was what was that thought process? I, mean, so I, I know I went off track a little bit. My apologies. Yeah. No, no, no. It's good. Yeah. When I was interning, you know, just the never ending learning, uh, seeing the atmosphere, seeing the personalities flowing around the office. I think that's what really caught grasp me. And then kind of being your own boss um, in a way that you can market yourself out the way, at least to an extent, of course, yeah, sure, the sure. way like and uh I just thought it was really fun and creative and I always thought I had these great ideas so 
with that time growing as an intern, then being an assistant to the one and only Jeff Rogers, it, it really gave me a, a perspective that this is going to be the love of my life, this career. And then just how I can help people, you know, I never thought I would amount to helping people in such a way. Like, you know, of course, I'm not a heart surgeon, but changing people's addresses, uh, giving them advice on their investments. And then, you know, of course, making friends along the way. I thought this was just it. It was the dream opportunity. And it has been. So, I mean, your story is really, I think, inspirational and aspirational for a lot of people your age, right? So mm -hmm. I could probably a lot of people that can identify, I'm graduating college, I don't know what I'm going to do. Is real estate going to be the right decision? So when you decided to move from being an assistant now to becoming your own, being a salesperson yourself, obviously mm -hmm. we're not paid. And so, you know, it's all commission based. I mean, was that scary? Were you thinking, oh my gosh, this is like, I, I don't know if I can do this kind of thing? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it took me, I think, five and a half to six months to get my first paycheck. And it was pretty wow. ruthless. You know, I definitely had some money saved up. I worked at the school mailroom before, you know, I stepped into the real estate world. So I had some money saved up on the side. My dad gave me an understanding of what I was getting into, of course, and kind of, you know, talking with brokers along the way about how the expenses can add up without getting a closing and definitely learning a lot from Jeff. You know, Jeff taught me that more than anyone I would, I would suppose. And um, yes, and there was a time in, in my career in the first six months um, that I thought I wasn't going to make it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I had a lot of determination. I was even, I think, fired by a client once. It was really sad. I had a girlfriend at the time. I was crying in her arms when she sent me a text. <laughs> it, was, it was terrible. And, you know, I think it, instead of crying about it too much, I, I motiv motivated myself to say, hey, you know what, this is just a little curveball. I could still overcome this. And uh, lo and behold, after my first paycheck, which I sold my dad a property, he was my first sale. It kind of just clicked from there. And I think I closed 11 the following six months. Wow. And so I know one thing that you did, and I, don't, and I really want to hear exactly what you did. I think people will yeah. learn from that. But I know one thing that you did is you were so hungry that you went to all the agents, the top agents in our company and said, I will run down any lead. If you got some crappy yeah. lead, I'll, I'll run it down, you know, 30 miles, 40, 50 miles out. And, mm -hmm. I, and so I know you did a lot of like uh, the super grunt work where some people are, I think agents don't, aren't willing to make the sacrifice. You made the sacrifice and that make a difference. Yeah. Oh, definitely. And I can tell you, it's still a part of my career today. You know, there's still <laughs> agents that give me the grunt work and I'll take it. I'll take all the grunt work because I can tell you each person deserves to ha have that special service. And that's what I specifically try to provide. And yeah, I did. I went to everyone, anyone in the business that really didn't want to take a lead that was an hour and a half away or a listing that was just too difficult to sell because any business is good business, in my opinion. Yeah. So, so how did, what, talk about those 11 deals that you got. Was that, was it a lot of that kind of thing or was it also lead generation prospecting? Where did it come from? You know, uh, definitely agents around our office. And that's one of the many reasons why I love our company is how we help each other out in a way. And I can tell you, Shannon Putris was a big, uh, big thing for me. Uh, she came in, saw the motivation level and she referred me a lot of clients and you know, I definitely have a lot to thank her for that. Uh, Deanna Sickler and Diane Lane, Alice Lima. I mean, some of the top producers in our industry, especially within our office, I scoped that out. I would say that was probably 50%. If not, uh, I would say at least 50% of those closings were probably from referrals. The others were from uh, kids' parents that I went to college with. And of course, my internal internal circle. And uh, of course, through social media, you know, very minimal part to the business, in my opinion, but still major in the way of solidifying your internal circle. And showing that you're still in the business and doing well, but I think it influenced a lot of my friends, you know, to come to me, and uh, that was probably the other half, I would say. So that's interesting because I think, and in, because in, I started too young as well. When you're, you know, you're younger, a lot of times there's like a little bit of resistance to using you because you're young, yeah. and you've got to kind of prove yourself that you are somebody that people can trust to get the job done. Did you find that at all? Where there was a little bit of resistance, and then you had to overcome it, or yeah, kind of, yeah, kind of that way. No. Definitely. I mean, I still get that resistance being young or being the way I look. And I think the second someone talks to me or has a conversation, they can understand the professionalism and experience now. But back in that time, uh, I was fighting that, you know, and I think my claim claim to fame in one of my spiels is if I don't know, I'll find you the answer. And uh, I was very confident on saying that over the next few months, realizing you don't have to portray, you know, everything. We don't know everything. But if I can find you the answer in a timely fashion, I think that's what really guides clients my way. Now today, I mean, your, your business, I mean, you're doing 
an incredible business, one of the top agents in their industry now. So what, what is your business today? I mean, is it, is it mostly sphere of influence? Is it online leads? Is it a mix of, of everything? I mean, what is it today? It's probably a mix of everything, in my opinion. Majority is referral, though. I think I'm almost at an 85 or 90% referral. I'm at this point where I was hosting back in the day, two open houses a weekend, and even some on the days, you know, anything, anyone that had a house listed that I thought would bring in the people, I would take. And that was a lot of my hustle. I also went out to eat a lot, Mm -hmm. Uh, just kind of putting myself out there, nicely dressed, getting people to inquire what I do. But now I I, I have the, uh, how do I say, the benefit of I don't have to do that as much anymore. A lot of my friends, past clients, um, of course, a lot of my listings bring on the lead generating as well. Um, you know, I still have the referral source from also other brokers that need help around the office. And, uh, yeah, I kind of, I sit back, I'm not as stressed anymore for the leads. <laughs> <laughs> so you got a good flow going. So yeah. I know one of the things that you're strong on too, is, I mean, I see you out and about, I just saw you, saw you the other night, you know, when we were both at dinner. So you're yeah. a networker. I mean, you are a natural networker. And I think I, I see you networking with high level people, you know, Sam Martinus, I saw, saw you out there with, but I mean, you have a lot of friends and I, so as a, do you find today a lot of it is just like your circles referring to you or do you, do you also working like a, a set sphere of influence? Are you working a CRM and doing mailings and, you know, that kind of thing too? You know, uh, a lot of, you know, one of my best friends is Steve Thomas at uh, EXP and we, we talk almost on a regular basis. And, you know, of course he's all about the mailings. Yeah, and everything. For sure. so, and and the CRM. Me, on the other hand, I've dedicated my whole personal life in a way that I just keep it in here, and uh, <laughs> I don't do any mailings or cold calls. Um, yes, my focus is definitely getting my face out there, networking in front of people. I think going out to dinner, um, even if it's just one person or a friend or a client, etc., uh, just putting yourself out there in company that people can view you and see you. Um, definitely goes a long way if it's still not inquiring about real estate anyway, but you know, when you're just hitting the town and how do I say, uh, someone knows me as that's the real estate guy. Right. And then they at this one location, they see me at another. It makes me look like I'm the go-to guy in the town. Yeah. So, Joe, Joe Sesso calls that being the mayor. <laughs> you're, kind of, you're the mayor, right? <laughs> We're trying that. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I know another, another side of this is that you deliver amazing service to your clients. And I think you, you're the, you, when you say you're a hustler, you're a hustle for your client too. And so it, you, you provide raving fan level service and they, they naturally want to come back and refer to you. Um, mm-hmm. Do you find that um, you, you create, when you're working with somebody, does it, does it, does it become a friendship most of the time with most of these clients? I mean, you become friends with them and that's what, that's what's driving your business. Yeah. I mean, I would say, yeah, 90, 95% of the time they do become my friends. You know, of course we hang out less after the sale and that's sure, their, sure. that's their, you know, fault. I would say I would hang out with them anytime <laughs> they want. <laughs> right, right. But the majority of the time uh, we choose each other and I tell them that from the get go, I'm like, Hey, you know, you don't want to work with me. That's more than okay. I'm not everyone's cup of tea. Uh, but I can tell you one thing. Most of the time we do gain a friendship through this because I'm very casual. I'm very uh, personable. I tell people about my personal life. I don't really separate the business from the personal. And uh, I think that's what's really gotten me far in this career is people know I'm real with them. Well, you're very authentic. And I think that authenticity shows through. So you're not, you're not two different people, one person on Instagram, another person in person. You're, you're exactly the same guy. Exactly. Um, I think the, the one thing I, I always show people about you is one thing that you do with listings, which is, it's so simple, but it's so powerful is that you do like a 20, yeah, a walkthrough of every property, but you're super casual about it. And <laughs> I see you go live and you're like, Hey dudes, I'm going to be listing this property tomorrow morning. And da, 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 and you just kind of walk people through. Do you have a set? Like, this is what I do on every listing. I have this procedure to sell listings. You know, it's more so like how I'm feeling, you know, yeah. sometimes <laughs> some listings that don't get that, you know, it's uh-huh. kind of above in a good mood and feeling ready for it. And I definitely feel a little witty. Uh, yeah, I'll just put it up, but that definitely does help the cause where I bring a little fun into real estate and, yeah. and serious seriousness portion out of it. Mm-hmm. So with, uh, now are you working, do you have an assistant or you work, you have a transaction coordinator? Cause you're doing a high volume of business now. So how do you manage it? You know, I have the greatest transaction coordinator ever, Lindsay Beers, you know, <laughs> she is fabulous, saves my day every day. And, uh, you know, I, I used to have an assistant. We parted on good ways. Um, it's just, you know, I can manage. I still, there's still days that I don't get out of bed till 12, you know, just cause I'm doing the work smarter, not harder type of way. And, uh, if I don't have to get out of bed until 12, I don't think I deserve an assistant. 
No. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. So uh, what, when you look at your business today, is it, is it mostly sellers, mostly buyers? Is it even mix? I mean, what's the percentages? You know, early on, it was definitely buyers, like nine, nine out of 10 at the times, just because they're kind of easier to get. There's more buyers than sellers, yeah. like especially in our market. Um, mm-hmm. You know, definitely now I would say it's probably almost 50 50. I mean, I'm scoring almost a listing a week, uh, maybe even two um, at this point. And definitely the buyers are still there. They've always been plentiful in my career, but the sellers are just starting to come around, which can show that a lot of my repeat clientele um, from those first time home buyers I sold a few years ago are now returning to me. Okay. So I think that's for the uplift in the, uh, the listing department. What? I mean, if you were coaching a new agent and, you, and, you, and the new agent comes to you and says, okay, Alex, I want to model your success or I want you to tell me your best advice. I mean, what would you give, the, what, what advice would you give to a new agent? You know, what I would tell them is, is first things first, because back early on, you know, when I was starving for those first six months and I was, you know, I was definitely portraying, I was this hot shot. I wasn't lying to individuals, but you still got to portray that confidence that you know what you're doing yet not making much, uh, definitely save money. You know, I tell people at least have 10, probably $10,000 just for gas, marketing, spoiling clients. Um, I think that's huge because if you start running low on money, um, you know, you just can't be the superstar that these clients deserve. And it changes your mental state. It definitely makes you rethink uh, certain ways to definitely market your properties. You know, if you're going to skimp on photos or skimp on certain things and, and clients don't deserve that. So I would say save up money, Go to the training classes that your company or brokerage uh, definitely allows. I can tell you that that was huge. I was going to forms training and I know Jeff made me go to those too <laughs> when I was his assistant. So that helped a lot as well in my career. So knowing, knowing the craft and knowing, you know, yeah. knowing, knowing the forms, knowing the systems, I think is, is critical. Ed, um, edu- definitely. <laughs> education, education, education. So with your, uh, with technology today, is there any tech that you're using in your business that you're like, this is something I use every day, something that really makes a difference, or is it mostly hand-to-hand combat? You're just like networking and, you know, shaking hands and kissing babies. Most of it's hand-to-hand. I, I can tell you, uh, I, I, as you know, probably I'm not the tech, the savviest of the tech people. <laughs> so uh, unfortunately uh, I don't use too much other than probably Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, I even have my Snapchat code on the back of my business card. It just shows a little personal life on my end. And of course, some of the real estate stuff too. But, um, you know, I mean, social media, it, it's big in the way of reminding your clientele. It, yeah. it gets me new clientele in that way because there's nothing worse than one of your friends that you haven't seen in a few years, but you were really good friends with them in the past. And he says, Alex, I haven't seen you in a while. I just bought a home. Oh my God, I forgot you were a realtor. And that's right. just like, yeah, that is some easy business loss right there. <laughs> Are you so with that said, and, and that's really interesting because when you when we always as as older people like me, we always think the young guys like you are super tech savvy and they're leveraging all this technology every day. But it's really telling that it's for you, it's hand to hand combat most of the time. But yep. that being said, uh, with social media specifically, are you posting multiple times a day, once a day, just, just tactically? Is it twice a day? What does it look like for you? Oh, it's not tactical. It's also like I said, earlier, organic, right? It's like, you know, get, yeah, if I'm getting up thinking, okay, I need to get some posts out there. I need to get a little lively. You know, it's maybe, bit, maybe it's been a bit mm-hmm. and just, it's just kind of a feel, you know, I don't yeah. wake up every day saying, you know what? I need to post something. Yeah. You know, so. Something like that. <laughs> yeah. But and how much of it is video? Do you do a lot of video? Yeah, I would say video is a more personable side, uh, mm-hmm. especially hearing the voice, uh, kind of putting a little more fun into it. But yeah, video, I almost prefer over post. If It mm-hmm. all depends on how busy my schedule is. If I'm not as busy as probably the normal days, I would say I'm going to do a video. Mm-hmm. But if I'm really quick on the draw and I think I need to advertise this, especially if my client is on social media and I yeah. know it would show a lot of appreciation to them. I'm going to do a post at the least. <laughs> so let me ask you the question about, about video. Is Are your videos pretty much when you're doing videos about a specific house or are you just talking to camera and saying, Hey guys, here's what's going on with me or whatever. Or Sometimes. Is right? You know, uh, definitely each year when we have our annual awards or some big thing in my career. Uh, yeah. Sometimes I'll ramble on or, you know, if there's a funny story to talk about, definitely, you know, it's also other stuff in my life, you know, if it's, I'm drinking with friends or going on a vacation, yeah. but uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's, uh, I guess I kind of lost track about what the original question was question was no, no, just what, what your videos contain because i think a lot okay. of agents get kind of video block about what what the heck i'm going to do with video but that mm-hmm. but that answers it i mean you're you're organically talking about what's going on in your life you're you're sharing your success sometimes it's listings just kind of sharing mm-hmm. what's going on with you um 
and just uh, I'm just curious from a from a perspective of being old myself in my fifties, <laughs> how big is your audiences? I mean, and are you conscious of that? Does it even matter to you how big your audiences are on on social? You, you know, not really. It doesn't matter. It could be one person, you know, <laughs> or okay. it could be it could be a million. I think I would act the same way. Okay. Uh, you know, probably it's in a couple hundred on each of my social medias right now. It's not like, I mean, I think that's a perception that we have is like, oh, these guys have thousands and thousands of followers or something. This mm-hmm. is just your core group of people, right? It's just the yeah. people you know, like, and trust you. Okay. Exactly. I mean, that that's really telling for a lot of people, I think. Um, mm-hmm. When you, when you're uh, working today, do you find that people today in your age group are starting to buy houses or are you still selling to older people? I'm just curious. It's- it's definitely more so a lot of people in my age group, especially the return clientele that I sold to a few years ago. And of course, mm-hmm. my buddies that, you know, especially in my eternal circle that have, I've been pitching them the benefits of home ownership and getting mm-hmm. out of rent. You know, that's a, I'm no hypocrite. I own my own home too. And I think they see that and the wealth that can come from it. And yeah, I would say a lot of my business is probably definitely the younger crew, but also, uh, you know, the elderly individuals, they can definitely see where I've become in my career. They've seen my Zillow profile. I emphasize that to a lot of them too, just so they can know what I've done with myself. And uh, I think, yeah, I would say it's definitely started as the elderly were a big part. Mm-hmm. And now the young crew, especially the returning clientele has became almost, almost a 50, 50 in my, in my client world. <laughs> well, let's, let's hit Zillow for a second. Cause you brought that mm-hmm. up and it's, it's important. And I talk about this a lot, but uh, I know you have a great Zillow profile. So, so are you uh, chasing people down? I wouldn't say chasing people down, but are you really encouraging them to review you on Zillow? And, um, and, and is that something that's a part of your process? You know, uh, it should be. I can tell you that at the least. And I would tell that to any other broker that they should emphasize it. I don't. And, you know, all my reviews, I don't have many. I think I have like 10 or 11 came from natural, like from a client asking if I can give a review. I'm just so overwhelmed with getting to the next part. And last thing I feel or last thing I want to do is make this client feel like it's about me rather than, um, so I'm always a little hesitant, but every client that has said, Alex, where can I leave a review? And I'm like, I don't normally ask, but I guess Zillow, they're like, Alex, you should ask, man. It's no big deal for us. You've done so much, you know, but I definitely feel like it's a game changer for a lot of brokers that have those 50 plus reviews and you'll easily win a listing appointment in my opinion, when it shows those high level reviews. So let's talk about listings. So you you come in most of the time. You're probably referred by some by somebody in your circle for a listing. Are you coming in with a listing presentation, or are you just come in and hey, I'm Alex. Let me tell you how, how I work. So used to as of uh, two years ago, I can't. Maybe it was last year. I remember I even showed you this little listing presentation sheet I created, yes. and uh, I realized I needed something personal rather than the form, formal company, you know, listing presentation sheet. Something that's come straight from me. And uh, I created this thing. It took me a couple hours and it's been a real game changer. But uh, that is something I definitely do present within my listing packet, you know, with comps, the property profile, et cetera. Um, I used to just do it on the fly, but Mm -hmm. I'm starting to realize, especially going against, you know, these top producers that they have material that's probably going to beat me out if I the gift of gab can only go so far is what I'm trying to. You can only win on personality. So, so it'll only take you so far. Exactly. I'm curious just because we're in a highly competitive market, like everywhere in the country today, do you find you're competing most of the time or is it mostly just you when you're going on listing? Um, you know, it's, it's, that's another 50, 50 thing. You know, normally if it's within my inner circle, I got it locked in, you know, something that's a question, you know, initially, but even then I'll I'll probably put that to rest and, and they'll walk it up with me. But uh, yeah, I still definitely go to listing appointments where I'm competed with. Uh, normally, I like to think I'm the first person that was called. Yeah. And, you know, you do have that sense of, uh, how do I say, if you got it or not, if you don't have the listing signed by that meeting, mm-hmm. it does give you that feeling like, did you do it right? You know? Right. And, right. Did you yeah, well, so, yeah, exactly. Sometimes I get it. Sometimes I don't. But I can tell I'm always honest. Um I'm maybe a little too casual for my own good. And that could be a con sometimes and lacks a little professionalism in their opinion. Um, but other than that, I, I definitely come in strong showing what I can entail and detail out the process. So let's talk about this for just a second. And that yeah. is, you've said it several times already today that you, you come in sometimes casual and uh, when you're coming into a listing appointment, do you dress up or is it just say hey, what's ever happened in, in my day that day? All depends on the person, of course, and all depends on the refer- like who referred it. Mm-hmm. Uh, normally, you know, a lot of the time I'll, I'll put on a suit 
Definitely mm -hmm. first impressions uh, are a huge thing in my opinion, but I can tell you the suit doesn't always work. Uh, yeah. Definitely for a two and a half million dollar listing appointment, I didn't get this one, but they saw one of my $2.3 million listings. And this is when I wrote that little listing presentation sheet because I was like, okay, I'm getting into the multi-million dollar listing stage. I definitely need something to present and up my game. Yeah. You know, this ranch property in a suit, that's not a smart idea. Yeah, no, it doesn't matter. That. <laughs> so it's situational, I guess, right? Very situational. Yes. I judge it by the property, honestly. Gotcha. Okay. And uh, with, with your client base, um, is that, do you find that you, you can say my client base is continuing to grow? Like, or is it usually, is it like a set? Like I got about a hundred people that are tight with me, or do you find that it just keeps growing and growing and growing? You know, I think uh, the past sales would show it. It's definitely growing. I'm knowing more people. Uh, not only is the repeat clientele coming in there, but they're introducing me to their circles and I'm definitely going to events, you know, that clients are hosting, getting myself into their circles. Well, thankfully, you know, thankfully yeah. they like, it enough, but <laughs> you know, it's uh, definitely growing in my opinion. And my phrase and how I reflect my business is if I don't make even a penny more than the previous year, that will show to me that something is wrong with my business. Mm, so it's gotta be progression. So yeah. I think one thing that you're super strong with is you're a social guy. And I think a lot of people, um, maybe struggle with that being as social as they should be, but you're definitely, you know, a social person. Um, mm -hmm. when, when you're talking to uh, people that may be a little bit uh, not as social as you, do you draw them out? I mean, do you, will you engage them? I mean, how do you, how do you approach that conversation? Well, um, I read the, read the personality for sure. Mm -hmm. you know, and I do deal with that on an everyday basis with someone that's definitely not as social as me. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> I'm ready to see if someone can out talk me. And, uh, <laughs> So I, of course, settle myself down. Um, you know, it's about the client. So I got to make them feel comfortable. And uh, I think it's just judging the scenario and, and reacting in, in a way that almost chameleon like, of course. Yeah. yeah you got to adjust to every person. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. So um, now here's an interesting question, because I think a lot of young people, when they're coming into this business, they get this, this mindset, because they're seeing other people do it, they say, I got to grow a team. And my, my mission in life is I got to be a team. I got to have 10 people working for me. And they got this whole kind of thing. You've obviously chosen not to do that. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I don't know if that's a, a goal for you, but you made the choice. I'm going to be a solo agent. I'm going to have a TC. I'm going to have this incredible lifestyle. And this is, this is going to be my model. Why did you choose that model? You know, uh, it's quality, quality yeah. of service. Um, I'm huge on that. It's, it's all about when it comes to quality, that depends on your reputation, depends on the friendships you're going to make. And uh, basically, you know, of course, I had an assistant and, uh, you know, and of course, those thoughts came into my head. They, they still do. Uh, mm -hmm. But at this point, I don't have a family. I just have a little dog. I have a house. You know, I don't have much responsibilities to come home to. So my primary responsibility is taking care of my client. And, uh, you know, it's just, that's the biggest concern for me is when you start to have other people under you, mm -hmm. the lack of quality, it, it's bound to happen, you yeah. know, and uh, that's something I don't want any, anything to reflect on. I would rather own up to the mistake because it was done on my end. Type yeah. Of thing. Well, it is interesting. I mean, when you look at the profitability too of solo agent uh, versus team leader, um, and I've looked at this a lot, the, the most profitable agents in our industry are solo agent, maybe with an assistant or a TC, exactly who, where you're at. Um, so it's very, very interesting when you start to take a look at that. Some, it, the perception is team leaders would do better, but when you split up all that income, a lot of times they don't do better and, they, and their lifestyle isn't as good as yours. So Alex, mm -hmm. you've shared a lot with us. You are a rock star. You're going to continue to be a rock star in this industry. Um, if somebody wants to refer to you, because we've got a lot of people watching from across the country, uh, mm -hmm. how would they find you? You know, um, it's right now, especially in other areas of Oregon, you know, through my friends that have moved or, you know, other realtors that I've worked with here that have decided to move out of the area, you know, from California, I have my buddy Patrick, I have, you know, Janet and Ben, and also some buddies in Portland. But, um, you know, when it comes to exposure like that, that's when the social media comes into play. Okay. And uh, especially from someone that's traveled a lot, being raised in Houston, going to a college in Vermont, even having time in Georgia, um, I have connections kind of a little bit everywhere in that standpoint. So the social media is when that comes into play. In, in my so, opinion. But for people to, to find you, if they're going to refer you business, they would, they could find you on social at Alex Aronson. Uh, well, I have that John L. Scott website, the www.alexaronson.johnlscott.com. But uh, yeah, that, that is a good question. There's probably better ways I can enhance that situation for me. 
And uh, I've just been so consumed with what's in front of me <laughs> that I haven't <laughs> got a chance to think, how do I expose my name more? <laughs> well, you're doing great. Oh, well, thank Alex, thank you so much for being on the program. You shared a lot of great nuggets for all of our team. I'm sure everybody's going to learn from you. Being, more than that, be inspired by you. So thank you so much, my friend. No, thank you so much, Jim. True honor. I mean it. Thank you. Right, brother. Have a great day today. You too, sir. Take care.